to achieve this, all countries must observe international law. Ladies and gentlemen, Japan will offer its utmost support for the efforts of the countries of ASEAN as they work to ensure the security of the seas and the skies and thoroughly maintain freedom of navigation and freedom of overflight. Japan intends to play an even greater and more proactive role than it has until now in making peace in Asia and the world something more certain. As for Japan's new banner of proactive contribution to peace, Japan already enjoys the explicit and enthusiastic support of the leaders of our allies and other friendly nations, including every leader of ASEAN member countries, as well as the leaders of the United States, Australia, India, the UK, France, and others. So let me just repeat, Japan for the rule of law. Asia for the rule of law and the rule of law for all of us. Peace and prosperity in Asia forevermore. That's what I wish to state to you today. Would you not agree that now is the time to make a firm pledge to return to the spirit and the provisions of the 2002 Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea that all concerned countries in the sea agreed to and not to undertake unilateral actions associated with a permanent physical change. The time to devote our wisdom to restoring peaceful seas. Is now. But in recent months, China has undertaken destabilizing unilateral actions asserting its claims in the South China Sea. It has restricted access to Scarborough Reef, put pressure on the long standing Philippine presence at the Second Thomas Shoal, begun land reclamation activities at multiple locations, and moved an oil rig into disputed waters near the Paracel Islands. We also oppose any effort by any nation to restrict overflight or freedom of navigation, whether from military or civilian vessels, from countries big or small. We will uphold those principles. We made clear last November that the U.S. military would not abide by China's unilateral declaration of an air defense identification zone in the East China Sea, including over the Japanese administered Senkaku Islands. And as President Obama clearly stated in Japan last month, the Senkaku Islands are under the Mutual Defense Treaty. And we will ensure that we sustain our freedom of action in the face of disruptive new military technologies. We are committed to properly handle disputes over territory, sovereignty, and maritime rights and interests. We will never accept provocation by others under the pretext of positive pacifism that stirs up tension for self, their selfish interests. Here I would like to divert from my prepared script of speech. I personally think that this speech by Mr. Hagel is full of hegemony, full of words of threat and uh, intimidation. It was a speech to abet destabilizing factors to create troubles and make provocations. It was not a constructive speech. China has never took the first, taken the first step to provoke troubles. China has only forced have, to respond to the provocative actions by other parties. It is the United States and Japan who are assertive in concerted efforts, not China. And China is only making, forced to make the minimum lowest level response to their provocation. 